Now next is question number 50. Now this question asks us the students of a college were working on regeneration using planaria. We know planaria is a platyhelminth and asteris which is a starfish that belongs to phylum echinodermata. Planaria was cut in three pieces namely a piece with head, with tail and middle piece. While asteris bearing five arms was cut in such a way that after separation six pieces were obtained. One with an arm with a portion of the central disc and four pieces cut from the tips of each of the remaining arms and the last is the remaining body. The animals were allowed to regenerate completely how many planaria and asteris respectively will be obtained after the completion of regeneration in both. Now students as you know that platy helminths they have tremendous ability of regeneration and planaria when it is cut into three parts it will regenerate into three individual planaria. So each part of planaria will regenerate into an individual organism while when we are talking talking about starfish then the piece which is having a portion of central disc along with arm will regenerate into one starfish but the four pieces which are cut from the tips of each of the arm that are devoid of central disc will not be able to regenerate and the last part which is having the remaining body with the remaining central disc will be able to regenerate into individual starfish. So we will get three planaria and two asteris or two starfish. So if we look at the options then option A says 1, 1, option B says 3, 2, option C says 3, 6 and D says 1 and 2. So definitely the answer is option B which says that we will get three planaria from three pieces and two starfishes from the first and the last piece. Let's move to our next question. Next is question number 51 which asks us fecundity in animal world is the maximum possible ability of an individual to produce offsprings during its entire lifetime. So first of all here you get the definition of this word fecundity that is the maximum possible ability to produce offsprings or young ones in the entire lifetime of an organism. Following factors were checked for their effect on fecundity of different animal models availability of food during breeding season, mode of fertilization and population density. You need to tell that which of these factors can regulate fecundity. Now let's talk about the first factor availability of food during breeding season. Now food supply is an important environmental cue that makes the animal to decide how much to invest in reproduction. Obviously they need energy to reproduce so yes it is an important factor. Then second is mode of fertilization. Now animals can go for external fertilization or internal fertilization. External where the gametes are released outside the body in the water or the surrounding medium for fertilization and the parents are free or they can go for another cycle of breeding. But in internal fertilization where the organisms they have to contribute much because the young one or the offspring it is developing inside the parent body. So definitely it takes long time right and third is population density. Now students population density is number of organisms per unit area. Definitely low density will result into reduced fertility. How? Because definitely there will be a difficulty in finding mate for the sexual reproduction and secondly there will be increased inbreeding that is eventually going to decrease fecundity. So all of these factors are going to affect fecundity in an organism. So option A 1 and 2, option B 2 and 3, option C 1, 2, 3, option D none of the above. So yes it is very clear that our answer to this question is option 
C. So, answer is C. Let us move to our next question. Here we have question number 52. It says an organism has 27 pairs of homologous chromosomes. Students, first of all, we need to know what is a homologous chromosome. See, we have two set of chromosomes, which means half set of chromosome come from the maternal side, half set of chromosome come from the paternal side. So, we have two copies of chromosome 1, we have two copies of chromosome 2, likewise we have two copies till 23rd chromosome. Okay? So, it says an organism has 27 pair of homologous chromosome. Can you tell me how many pair of homologous chromosomes do you have? Yes, we have 23 pairs, but here in the question we have been given 27 pair. So, diploid condition, the diploid condition or you can also say 2n condition is what? Tell me, is it 27 or 27 into 2? Guys, 27 pairs it is writing. So, 27 pairs means it is 27 into 2 that is 54 chromosomes in total, right? Now, let us see what is the question saying further. In each daughter cell after completion of mitosis, okay. Let us say this organism has one cell which undergoes mitosis. So, after mitosis, okay, let us see what is asking. And in each gamete after completion of meiosis too, okay, dash and dash number of chromosome will be present respectively. So, we have to see if this organism who has 2n is equal to 54, how many chromosomes are present after mitosis and how many chromosomes are present after completion of meiosis too. Now, in order to understand a question like this, I always tell my students to make the simple diagram like this. So, this represents cell cycle here, this would represent M phase and this would represent the I phase, I as an interface. Now, M phase can be of two types, mitosis or meiosis. Okay. Now, during the interphase, 2n is equal to 54. Now, if this cell which has 2n is equal to 54, let us say this is the cell, if it undergoes M phase that is mitosis where the number of chromosomes remain equal, that is why this mitosis is called as equational division. So, what we will observe? We will observe even after mitosis when two daughter cells are formed, the number of chromosomes will still remain the same. Number of chromosomes remain same after mitosis. So, daughter cell formed will again have 54 chromosome here, 54 chromosome here. Right. Now, if this organism decides to undergo meiosis, so again, starting from 2n is equal to 54, if it undergoes meiosis to form gametes, we should be knowing that after meiosis, meiosis has two stages, meiosis 1 and 2, after meiosis, four gametes are formed, four cells are formed, four cells are formed. Now, after meiosis, number of chromosome reduces to half, which is why meiosis is known as reductional division. It is known as reductional division. So, what do you expect? How many number of chromosomes should be present in all these four haploid cells? Here we will see just the half that is 27, 27, 27 and 27. So, remember 2n is 54 and here again after mitosis this was 2n which is 54 again 2n diploid state. But here all these gametes are haploid, 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 haploid that is n, n, n. So, we can clearly see as we were asked in the question number of chromosomes present after the completion of mitosis and in each gamete after completion of meiosis too. So, one dash for this one and the second dash for this meiosis one. So, what will be the right choice? Yes. So, 54 after mitosis and 27 in the gamete after meiosis. I hope this is clear to you. The question came from cell cycle. Yes, cell cycle and cell division. Answer is option B. 
So let us take up our next question here.